What's up, Covalence friends? Welcome to a bonus section of the uploading files using Molter and Express series. Uh, essentially, a while back, I was working for a client where we had to use um, Express and Molter to upload files uh, to the back end, and form data just wasn't working for the particular device that we were using. It was an older Android device. It had to be used. They couldn't use a different device. And instead of just telling them that, you know what, it's not possible, we had to find a workaround, right? So the form data API is awesome. It works really well on probably every browser today. But the point of this video is to showcase the fact that not everything and not every API you use will always work for every use case that you encounter. And so you have to work, you have to find a workaround. And I just want to share the solution that I came up with, which was just converting it to be all binary data and sending it and recreating the form data request manually. So let's get right into it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up our app.ts file. And if you haven't watched part two of the uploading files using Molter and Express, I highly recommend you check it out or at least know what's going on. But in a nutshell, basically we're taking in a file from a file input. We're using an, X, an XML HTTP request uh, because we wanted to actually have a progress indicator in there. And we are sending up the file and using Molter to essentially uh, store the file locally, sending back a URL for that file, and then we're displaying it on the page. So we're treating it essentially kind of like a use case where a user's uploading an avatar. Um, so we're using an API called form data to do this, which provides a really convenient method called append, which basically allows you to add kind of key value pairs. And then behind the scenes, the browser actually constructs your multi-part form data request, which is extremely nice. You don't have to worry about doing everything yourself, um, but you can do it yourself. And a lot of people don't even realize this. They think, oh, well, the API is the only way to do it. But I have firsthand encountered situations where this form data API did not work on a particular device that I was using. Now it was a little bit of, a, you know, it was a, kind of a while ago and it was on an older Android device and I'm sure now everything is supported, but I guarantee you in your development career, you're gonna come across things that just don't work, right? The API for whatever reason doesn't work on a particular device and the client needs to use that device. And you're not gonna just tell the client that's impossible, although you might, but you shouldn't, right? And so there's always a workaround, there's always a way around it, and I've never once encountered a situation where I haven't been able to find a solution. And so right now, that's essentially what we're going to do, and we're going to construct a binary request that we're going to send, and Molter is gonna not see any difference with it. So instead of using this form data API, we're going to recreate the entire request uh, manually. So we can go ahead and we can comment out all of this. And we're going to go up to where we're checking for form data. And we can go ahead, we can copy this, but then we're going to comment it out because we're going to be using something else. We're going to use an uint eight array. And we're also going to be using something called file reader. All right, so after we instantiate, all of this is going to be exactly the same. None of this is going to change. It's all going to be what goes on down here. So we can say, uh, we can instantiate a new instance of file reader and file reader works the exact same way as the XML HTTP request. So, um, or not the exact same way, but it's similar, right? Where it has events that we have to listen to. So we're going to have an on load function and then we can have an on error function. And in the case of an error, we can just kind of say that, you know, the file upload failed. Hopefully we don't encounter that, but you know, for consistency sake, we'll just include this. And in the actual on load function, we're gonna have an event passed in that we can now grab the file data itself off of. So we can say file data equals, we're gonna cast it to a string because that's exactly what we want it to be. And we're gonna say target.result. And our file data will now be a result. And what this will allow us, or sorry, what we wanna now do is we wanna call the fr.read uh, as binary string method on the file. So this is going to get called and then when it's done reading it and it has the result, it's going to pass it in to this, to this event and we grab it by looking at the event.target.result right there. And now we actually have to define our uh, constants and whatnot that we'll be using to construct this uh, multi-part form data request, right? And so first thing we need is we actually need a boundary. And so what this, what this boundary does is it lets 
um, the person parsing the request, or when I say person, I mean, in this case, it'll be Multer, uh, but it would be your server, uh, whatever software you're using, whatever package you're using, and it lets them know the like where the breaks are in the form data, right? So if you have different fields, you know, you have the first name, last name, um, avatar, right? If you had all those included in the same form request, you need to actually separate those values somehow. And that's what this S boundary does, right? And so um, it can really kind of be anything as long as it's less than 70 characters, but uh, the standard is to essentially provide to use hyphens, right? So uh, by default, let's just say, we'll do six hyphens and then we'll say covalence and then it needs to be unique. And so we'll do a date.now function and then we'll do to string and we can pass in a radix of 16, which will convert it to a hexadecimal value. Um, it just shortens it up a little bit and uh, we can just go ahead and we can add a little suffix on there. Um, whoops, there we go. Something like TS, I don't know, for TypeScript. I don't, I don't know why I added that, but you can put whatever you want in there. It just has to be less than 70 characters total. And this is gonna be significantly less than 70 characters, right? So uh, this isn't actually a standard, but it is just common to use this. And if you use the form data API and you look at the request, you will see that even the browser itself will add uh, you know, these hyphens in there. Um, and you will need prefix prefixes and suffixes that are hyphens. So, Again, it's just more hyphens. It makes it look a little bit better and it shows kind of like a distinct separation uh, between values. So it's more for uh, readability purposes, um, but I like to use them and then I like to use, you know, values that won't be used elsewhere, right? And so we use that data now and we use the covalence in there. You could use whatever your application's called. You could do whatever you want. You could put your first name, last name, whatever. Um, so let's now define our file entry. And our file entry is going to essentially be the entry of this file, right? So we want to define the content disposition in here. And that's going to be form data. And then it's semicolon separated or delimited. And we're going to define our name, which we've defined as avatar, right? Because we're copying exactly what the form data API does. And then we have our file name that we're going to put in here. And it's going to be uh, file.name. All right, make sure you're putting your quotations in there. And uh, last but not least, um, we can actually do a slash r slash n, which is going to be new line characters. And we're going to do, um, actually we only need one new line character, right? So uh, it looks like two, but slash r slash n is actually only a single new line. And then we're going to define our content type, which is going to be file.type. That one doesn't need quotes. And after that, we're going to do two new lines slash r slash n make sure you do this correctly you need all those uh, backslashes in there and then finally we're going to put our file data so file data there we go all right so that'll be our file entry so we have our boundary we have our file entry now the last thing we need is the actual payload itself right so we're going to create a final template literal here that is going to be our payload. And the way that this works is we need a prefix. So it's gonna be a two hyphen prefix. We're going to pass in our S boundary here, right? So two hyphens S boundary, then we have a new line. So slash R slash N, then we have our file entry. Then we have another new line. And finally, we have our second, our ending boundary, right? So we have our prefix, we have our S boundary. And then after our S boundary, we actually have a suffix and then we can put a new line after that, right? So I know that's a lot, um, but you actually do need these prefixes and suffixes in there. And then when we define our payload and our, our content type for the request itself, we're going to define this boundary as well. So make sure your, all your syntax is correctly. If you don't have the right syntax, I mean, if it's literally, if you put an extra new line in there, a lot of times this won't work. So there is a specific way this needs to be done and accuracy is important when you're doing this, right? So it's just kind of like when you're defining variables and using variables, right? You have to make sure that everything is done correctly. So um, finally, we can create, uh, you know, we need our data length in here. So we'll say payload.length, and then we'll create our UI8 data array, which is eight array and it's n bytes long, right? And basically what we need to do is we need to convert this to a uh, binary request. So we're going to use a little for loop here. So uh, you can do let nidx equals zero um, and idx is less than n bytes. 
and plus plus nidx. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be setting each value of this UI8 data array um, to the payload.charcode at nidx. And we're going to and this, which is a bitwise operator with 0xff, which is one byte, right? So we're anding it with one byte. What this ensures is that every single entry into this UI data array is a single byte. Now, if you wanted to send something like an emoji, something like that, this probably wouldn't work. Um, since we're just dealing with a single image here, uh, this will be fine, but you won't be able to use this code if you were using things with characters that were greater than a single byte. So it probably will send something different than you want, or it might corrupt the data. I'm not sure, I've never tried it. Um, I highly encourage you to try it and let us know how it goes. Uh, but again, um, you know, this is essentially how you would have to do it um, with you know, everything is a single byte, right? So you can actually factor in all the characters and everything are gonna be just single bytes, right? So each character, I guess you could say, right? All right, perfect. So now we have our data. And so now we just need to create our, um, or we need to send it via XHR, right? So what we can do is we can actually do the exact same thing we'd have done here, which is just we're opening the XHR. And then what we have to do is we have to set the request header and define the content type of the entire request, right? And so we have our content type for each, for our file entry here, right? We have content type here, file.type, but that's just for this entry, right? So if you're gonna put another entry that's just a string, you'd have to find that as well. But for this, it's the content type of the entire request. So content type will be done twice. And what this is, is multi-part form data. And we actually have to define the boundary here as being s boundary all right so we have our request header now defined and finally what we're going to do is we're just going to call the xhr.send on the ui8 data right so we're not sending it on the payload we're actually sending it on the ui8 data array right so um, you know you could change this the, the variable name now that i'm looking at it, it doesn't make sense this should probably be payload but uh, don't worry about it too much stake on my part for naming it i highly encourage you to name your uh name your variables better than i do <laughs> but um all right so this looks good we are reading the file and as long as we didn't make any syntactical errors i believe we have everything we need so let's go ahead open up a terminal and we're going to do npm start All right, we're gonna open up our browser, go to localhost 3000. Let's open up our dev tools in here and zoom in a little bit. And then we're gonna choose our file, let's choose this. We're gonna submit and bam, we have our request in here. The avatar is binary. You can see the form data was constructed correctly. We can view the source. We have our boundary defined here, right? We have our content disposition, content type, and then all of this you know, garbage that we can't read, but that is actually just the uh, binary value of that image, right? So we gotta scroll all the way down to the bottom and we have our boundary at the end as well. So if we had more than just the image in here, we would see more entries, right? It would be separated by these boundaries and now we've actually constructed our form data manually. So again, we can look at our headers. If you use the form data API, you can look at this all this exactly the same way. And it'll look not identical because the boundary will be different. The, the browser will actually define its own boundary um, using a unique, you know, UUID of some sort. But you can see that the content type is defined correctly, multi part form data, boundary equals this, and everything works correctly, right? We can go ahead, we can upload whatever images we wanted. There is a little GIF. All right, so again, looks good. We can do this as many times as we want. And um, yeah, we have successful file uploading using binary data. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope you learned something. Again, you may never actually write the code that we wrote today. I feel like form data pretty much works everywhere now, but you never know, you may end up working with a client that needs a device that's a little bit older or for whatever reason, um, it just does not, construct form data correctly and you need a fallback, right? I mean, even Chrome could actually uh, submit an update that breaks form data and then all of a sudden you have a client with a mission critical 
uh, need to upload files to a, an express backend, right? And so you need to create a fallback solution where you're actually recreating that form data response or that form data request yourself. And um, even if even if that doesn't happen, it's always fun to mess around with this kind of stuff because it's nice to see that a lot of this uh, higher level functionality that these APIs provide are really just translated into like a little bit of a lower level functionality, right? And so um, again, if you want to get into creating, you know, fallbacks or polyfills or things like that, uh, this is the kind of stuff that you need to look into. This is the kind of stuff you need to do. And you need to start thinking of a lot of these APIs as just uh, shortcuts for things that can be done, you know, other ways. So if you ever encountered anything that you find is impossible, send it our way. Um, you know, however extreme it might be, we'd love to hear it. And we maybe will feature you on a, on a future episode. So please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already clicked that button below. And let us know if there's anything else that you guys want us to cover. So if not, we'll see you soon.